Hello, welcome to EC TV and the Rob from AHA 2022. I'm Rosette Dora, I'm a doll nephrologist from Barcelona, a member of the Council of the ERA. I'm going to be joined by Alta Schutz from Australia and Michael Papadakis from UK to discuss trials DCP and empokinin. So Alta, please, could you tell us about the DCP trial? What are the main results? And please highlight how this could impact clinical practice. Uh, thank you very much, Rosa. Yes, indeed, it's an important trial because diuretics have been used for decades to manage hypertension. And although there's been previous evidence showing that drugs such as chlorthalidone have some superiority, uh, there's actually been no head-to-head -head trials uh, comparing chlorthalidone versus hydrochlorothiazide to really uh, establish whether that is the case. So the diuretics comparison project therefore compared the effectiveness of these two common diuretics in reducing major cardiovascular outcomes uh, and non-cancer deaths. So it was a pragmatic trial, quite interesting, with, without any study staff performed in real-life practice throughout the veteran affairs health system. They included a major uh, sample of 13,000 veterans who were already taking a hydrochlorothiazide and switched then uh, to chlorothaladone as part of randomization. But they found no differences in major cardiovascular outcomes or non-cancer deaths, which was the primary outcome with a p-value of 0.4. Also, in doing a, a secondary analysis of individual cardiovascular components, such as stroke or myocardial infarction or heart failure, there were no, no differences. Um, so what does this mean for clinical practice? I think it simply indicates there's no clinical benefit in prescribing either hydrochlorothiazide or chlorothalidone. Uh, other more important considerations would be cost and availability or the potential of side effects because there were higher likelihood of hypokalemia with chlorthalidone. Also, the implications uh, of for women as the veterans trial mainly included men, 97% were men. Therefore, this result should be confirmed also in women. Thank you. So we have heard about the DCP trial. Now we're going to move on to the ampokinne. And can, I can tell you this was the greatest hit at the ASN meeting we had last weekend. Uh, so Michael, please tell us about the ampokinne trial. And again, why is this so important? And what does it mean for clinical practice? Thank you, Rosa. So the dapa ckd trial in 2020 demonstrated that in patients with chronic kidney disease, dapagliflozin reduced the risk of kidney function decline or death from renal or cardiovascular causes, and that was irrespective of the presence of diabetes. What the EMPA kidney trial does, they looked at an even broader range of patients with chronic kidney disease at risk of progression, including patients with an EGFR as low as 20. The investigators randomized 6,600 patients in empagliflozin versus placebo. Importantly, a third of the population were females and 54% did not have diabetes. The primary outcome was a composite of cardiovascular death or kidney disease progression, and secondary outcomes included all hospitalizations, all cause death, or cardiovascular death or heart failure hospitalization. The key findings of the trial are that there was a 28% reduction in the primary outcome of kidney disease progression or cardiovascular death, which was predominantly driven by the renal outcomes and results were consistent across all subgroups, including patients with and without diabetes. Moreover, there was a 14% reduction in all-cause hospitalization, again consistent across different groups, which is significant when one considers the high rate of hospitalization amongst these patients. In terms of cardiovascular outcomes, there were no statistically significant differences, which were predominantly due to the low number of absolute cardiovascular events observed during the trial. In summary, the EMPA kidney trial demonstrates that SGL22 inhibitors improve kidney outcomes in patients with chronic kidney disease, and that seems to be independent of the presence of diabetes or established cardiovascular disease, and suggests that those drugs should be considered earlier in a wide range of patients with chronic kidney disease. 
I'd like to thank Alta Schutz and Michael Papadakis for their insight into these trials and highlight the extreme relevance, especially of the Ampokini trial with its positive results that will for sure be a game changer. We'll look forward to hearing more from AHA in the coming days.